Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to create a unique prop using Core. But before I get into that, I want to give a brief description of a Core game platform for those who don't know about it. Core is a PC gaming platform where you can play over 20,000 games. And more importantly for our video today, Core is a platform where you can create your own games as well. Core is available for download for free through the Epic Games Store. So check out the link in the video description now to download it. Core is free to use for everyone and it's based on the Unreal Engine, which makes it very versatile as well as easy to use. For me personally, the fact that you can use many of the same keyboard shortcuts as Unreal makes using the engine much easier and intuitive to use. In my opinion, the library of assets they have Plus the fact that it's very easy to customize those assets makes the whole process of creating things like large environments that much easier. With so many useful tools within Core, it's no wonder the level you see right now was made only in 2 days and this level by a recent high school graduate in only 7 days. If you are an artist and don't want to spend too much time with the technical side of things, Core comes with great out of the box frameworks which don't require much coding from your part. This allows you as an artist to focus on the look of the game while Core takes care of the programming aspects of the game making process. On the flip side, if you are more of the programmer type, you can also do your own coding within the engine and get access to a vast library of art assets so you don't have to make your own artwork, music or VFX for your game. Also, if you decide to publish a game and make money off it, you get 50% of the revenue which is pretty nice when you consider Core takes care of a lot of the work such as the servers, multiplayer and publishing. Many core creators have been able to pay their bills, buy their dream cars and quit their day jobs with the help of the Perks program. The core platform is really popular these days and a lot of people play the games published to core on a daily basis. Overall, the platform really facilitates the game making process as well as handling game publishing. If you haven't already, I would highly suggest you download it and give it a try. You will be surprised at how easy it is to get going with it. Again, there's a link in the video description for you to download it through the Epic Games Store. Today I'll be showing you how to create a water well using some of Core's primitives as well as their materials. This will be fairly easy to do and hopefully it will give you an idea of the possibilities and the kind of unique things you can make for your Core game. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open the Core Editor. So in this video I'm going to be using the Dungeon Template. So when you open that, you'll see that this looks really familiar and similar to Unreal Engine if you have used that before. Alrighty, so in this case we're going to be creating a water well. The techniques I'll be showing you can be used to create pretty much anything else. Now you'll notice here that I already have a few reference images. Down here we have what is essentially a content browser with our project content as well as the core content folder. The core content folder here pretty much has all the 3D objects, materials and pretty much any other tools that you will be using to create your game. So in our case what we want to do is we want to go to the core section because we're going to be using some of the primitives found within core to make our object. In this case what we want to look for is the basic shapes so that we can look into how to use these to create unique assets. So let's start by creating the base of the water well. And in this case let's go ahead and search for a pipe. And let's go ahead and use the pipe thin 01 large. So let's drag this in. Now it's really large, so I'm going to press the R key to scale this down. And I'll use the middle cube to scale this down. And as you can see here, uh, we can scale this on this axis as well. Now notice that right now as I scale this, it's actually snapping to the grid. So we want to freely be able to transform this and scale this as we want. So what we can do here is we can change the amount of snapping. So let's set it to 0.1 for now. And as we can see, we can still uh, scale this down. Still snapping. Uh, but in this case, what we want to do is we want to click here to disable that. So that disables snapping and we can actually freely scale this down. So when you do that, you can freely snap. I mean, not snap, but you can freely scale this without the snapping. Now snapping helps a lot because if you're using modular pieces for example, it helps you with uh, keeping those pieces in a way that you can snap them together really easily. In this case we're making a standalone prop, so we don't necessarily have to worry too much about the snapping. Let's scale this down just a little bit more. 
let's go ahead and hit the play button to see what this looks like. Uh, once we have our player in the scene and we can walk around it with WASD. And I think the scale looks relatively good. Obviously you want to test it uh, by playing your game to see that the scale of the object you're making uh, works with uh, your intended use. I'll scale this slightly more and make it just slightly taller. So let's go ahead and add an extra layer at the top of this. So let's go back to the counter browser and look for another piece. Let's go ahead and use this one. I'm going to enable snapping before I drag this in so that uh, it makes it a lot easier to drag this in and have it line up with the other piece really easily. So I'm going to scale this down. And because I have snapping on, I can kind of align these two together pretty easily. Uh, this is one of those cases where snapping comes in pretty handy. And so once it's snapped together uh, with the other piece, we can kind of disable, disable the snap option and then we can freely scale this down. Go ahead and move this up a little bit. And scale it so that uh, looks more like one of our, our references here. Okay, so basically now we have the base of our well here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the supporting pieces here. So let's add the wood section. So let's look for a piece that's going to be helpful here. So in this case, we're going to look for something that's kind of like a cube. Let's go ahead and use... Uh, let's use this one it has a little bit of a bevel to it. Or we can use one that's a lot sharper. In this case, I think using the sharper one should be okay. So let's drag this in. And we can start to scale this as well. So that it uh, looks more like a reference. I have snapping off right now, so I don't have to worry about the snapping. I'm just moving this into place. And at this point, you obviously have the creative freedom to pretty much uh, set this up however you want. As far as uh, the positioning and the look of it. Now what I want to do is I want to add the other piece of wood here. But instead of dragging another cube, we can just duplicate the existing one. So to do that, what we can do is we can press Control w And this essentially is going to duplicate our object, as you can see here. So I'm going to rotate it once I duplicate it. Uh, but I want to make sure I enable snapping before I rotate it so that I can... Uh, make it a little bit easier to uh, align here. So the keyboard shortcut for snapping is a G. So I'm just going to press G to enable and disable snapping from now on. It's always good to learn some of the keyboard shortcuts so that you don't have to repeatedly go to menus to do things. So let me make this section just a little bit thinner. This is what's going to be holding our roof essentially. I'm not going to duplicate this piece yet uh, because once we're going to do that once we apply materials to it. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this piece. As you can notice at this point I have added a roof mostly mainly as a temporary thing. I'm going to be showing you how to add our own unique roof in a few moments here. Just ignore that uh, roof being there for the time being. I'm going to be showing how to do how to add our own roof in a few moments here. So let's go ahead and add a section where the uh, our bucket is going to be uh, essentially hanging from. So let's look for a cylinder. And let's go ahead and use uh, this one. And I'm going to scale this and I'm going to scale this the other way as well. And then rotate it. I'll press G to be able to rotate this while it snaps. Again, don't worry about the uh, the roof being there for now. Uh, no, I know it looks like we skipped that part, uh, but I'm going to be showing you in a few moments here how to add that part as well. So for now, let's just go ahead and add this piece. And let me have it so that it intercepts the uh, other piece as well. And then what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate with Control W and scale this down. And this is going to be essentially a rope where our uh, bucket is pretty much going to be hanging from. We're not going to make a bucket this time, but you can also, uh, you know, seeing the same techniques, you can make your own bucket as well. Maybe the bucket in this case is already inside the uh, water well. I'm going to duplicate this piece now and scale it down so that uh, this is just a rope 
going down inside the well. So let's rotate this a little bit. Let me move this to the side just slightly. So let's go ahead and replace the roof this time. Um, like I said, let's go ahead and create our own. So let's look for a primitive here that looks kind of like the roof that we have here. Let's go ahead and use this piece. I'm going to rotate this and place this in the same position that I had the other one. Obviously, if you're following along, you won't have that one. So here's what it's looking like. And it looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'm going to delete the other placeholder one that I had. Um, this is why I didn't want you guys to follow along that section, just because I just had it that as a placeholder, just to get an idea of what it was going to look like. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this piece, and then just rotate it, and place it on the other side as well. See here, let's have this intercepting a little bit. I'll duplicate this piece here and put it on the side, so there's like an end piece to this. Alrighty, so there we have it. We have our shapes. So now basically what we want to do is we want to start to add materials to this. Obviously you can add more details to this. Uh, and also play it in game just to see what it's going to look like. And so that you know if you need to make adjustments to it. So the great thing about Core is that it comes with really good materials that we can use. So let's go ahead and go under the uh, materials folder. Let's look for brick. And we can try a few different ones just to get an idea of what this is going to look like. But in this case, I think this one works pretty well. Notice how the um, the tiling on the actual model doesn't seem like it's looking too well. So what we want to do is we want to come to the actual options of this. So let's go to properties. And we're going to scroll down to the material section. And what we want to do is we're going to disable the option that says uh, use smart material. And basically what that does is it allows us to manually change the tiling on the U and V uh, of the UVs for the material. So that's what uh, really helps uh, with actually creating your models and applying your own materials. The nice thing about this uh, material is that you can also apply a color override to it. So if you want to add some extra color to the material, you can do so. In this case, we want to keep that as white because we don't... I don't really want to add too much uh, color to it. Now what we could do here is we could uh, save this material as a new material. Or in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a new material to the top. Just because I think it's going to uh, behave a little bit differently anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's drag this onto our model at the top. And what we want to do is essentially the same thing is uh, disable smart material and apply a manual tiling to it. Now, depending on the model UVs, uh, some of the uh, tiling may not look uh, perfect, uh, but I think in this case, this works relatively well. All right, now let's go ahead and apply a wood material. So there's also a good section of wood materials here within core. So let's uh, apply, let's see, apply this one. It works pretty well. It has like a metallic end to it, which I kind of like. So let's go ahead and apply this to these other pieces as well. And let's try to keep it consistent and apply the same uh, wood material to these sections here. And I think I have to scale this one just a little bit more. And let's apply this wood, whoops, let's apply this material to this one. I think this one looks a lot better. Now let's go ahead and apply a material to the rope. In this case, let's go ahead and do, so, do a search for it. And it looks like there is a material here, which we can apply. We're going to disable smart material to apply our own manual tiling. So that looks uh, relatively well here. And it looks like this one has a color override. So I'm gonna set this to white, so it's a little bit lighter. 
and let's do the same to the rope. Now the last thing we want to do is apply a material to the roof. So let's look for some roof materials here. And I think I like this one. And let's try a few different ones. Now notice that the uh, material roof is uh, on the side, so it's not it's not on the correct direction. So what we want to do is we want to use a different model that we can apply this material to, which uh, once we apply a material to it, the direction of the material looks correct. In this case, it doesn't look right. So let's go ahead and use this piece instead. So this is a pretty similar piece. And we're going to be using this instead of the other one, just because the, the material itself did not apply correctly. So let's apply it this time so we can see that it works. Go to roof, drag this in, and as you can see now, the direction of the material is actually correct. So that's one thing that you have to do sometimes is you have to use different models um, when you're applying materials so that uh, you know that the uh, if you need a specific uh, direction for the material, you can do so. Now I'm going to apply a color variant to this, so it's a little bit warmer. So there you have it, that's how you can create something like this. And the final thing you want to do is duplicate this section and place it on the other side. So there you have it, this is how you can very quickly create a unique prop using Core. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can go about creating your own unique asset to make your games stand out from the rest. You can use the same techniques to pretty much make anything else you can think of. If you haven't already, check out the link in the video description now to check out Core for free. Let me know if you have any questions or if anything was not clear. I would also really enjoy seeing what you guys come up with, so feel free to share that as well. Also, if you want to see more Core videos in the future, just let me know. And don't forget to check the links in the video description for more information on Core. Okay everyone, thanks for coming by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.